Yeah, baby. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Well, I have hope. In the last video, I was lamenting uh, how I uh, might have to rethink taking the pump jack trader to El Dorado days because I ran into the Magneto fiasco. And then I remembered my old pal Larry had a uh, International 3 to 5 LB tucked under one of his shelves in his shop. So I called him up and asked him if he knew if, if the Magneto in that was hot. And he goes, well, it should be. And he said, give me uh, some time and I'll check it out. And so he called me back and sure enough, the Magneto had a hot spark. So I asked him if I could borrow it for a couple of weeks and he said, sure. <laughs> so I went out and uh, removed it from his three to five. And as you just saw in the last clip, I got it uh, chucked in the vise here and spun it over. And yeah, I got nice hot spark at the plug. This is gonna need a little work though. Uh, I've gotta do some more uh, cleaning in here. Uh, all the screws were loose and the points needed to be filed. And uh, so I did that and I put some lube on the cam uh, so I wouldn't wear the phenolic block down on the points. And uh, so I'm gonna clean those points a little more. That uh, set screw was loose and the gap had widened. So I got them set at 13 thousandths, like they're supposed to be per the book. I've got a broken screw here and a broken screw here. I don't know how successful I'm gonna be getting those out because those are steel screws in an aluminum housing. So I'm going to attempt that and see if I can't get that uh, those screws out so I can get the cover back on there. I got one screw here that won't engage on the coil. I'll try and fix that. Once I get those issues resolved, I'll uh, clean it up and then stall it in that thing over there. After a brutal seven hours, drilling undersize and then slowly working my way up, blowing it out with compressed air, picking chunks out with a pick, I uh, got these retapped and I had some stainless steel screws in the hoard that were the right size. So I got this all fixed. I didn't film any of it because it was literally hours of drilling and picking and blowing with compressed air, getting frustrated, throwing tools, you know, the usual normal shop stuff. So that is now fixed. It did not fix the screw um, down below here on the coil cover because it's broken way down deep inside the housing, and I didn't want to risk trying to drill that. So, yeah, that is now done. Well, I'm right back where I was three days ago. But at least I'm making progress for a change. Hopefully, this is turning this project around. We'll see. Yeah. Whoop. I got spark at the plug on the engine. I'm beginning to think this machine just doesn't want to go to the show. Uh, you've seen You've seen all the disasters so far, so we're ready to tighten the plug up, and then something caught my eye. It didn't look quite right. The stud on the adjuster is busted off, and there's no jam nut on there. Fortunately, I think on the other broken rocker arms, I have one of these that's good. <laughs> good. God. which I got to pull that off anyway so I can get a socket on there and tighten that plug up you can't get a wrench in there it's a it's a it's recessed in the head there's just no way you can get a wrench on that. it's got to be a socket deep well socket an inch and an eighth no less yeah here we go again okay that's done I just um, 
fish that off of the uh, broken rocker that came off uh, the little gray LB there. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the valves. I'm going to do that off camera because I did that in a previous video, exact same process. Get the valves adjusted and hook the plug wire back up. Then it's time to get this thing mounted, hooked up to fuel. And then I'm going to crank it up and see if it blows up. <laughs> this engine was supposedly rebuilt, but after discovering the problems with the mag, and then, uh, I mean, a good rebuilder would have caught that right away. I don't know. Who knows? Doesn't matter. It's old iron. Well, here's a positive. The surplus center came through. The new pulley arrived. like it's a good match the old pulley let's see if the uh, yeah center hub fits yeah. terrible camera work I apologize I'm so excited it's pulleys here center hub fits bolt circles correct hooray so this guy get mounted right back on here all right things are turning a corner oh so this uh, clipper belt lacer which I featured in previous videos when we belted the grinder on the pump jack trailer um, is here on long-term loan from my pal Jim he doesn't know when or if he'll ever do another flat belt, so he says, I might as well store this here be, uh, because he graciously uh, gave me belting and alligator clips um, because I have to lengthen this belt. Um, I've got this motor moved farther aft to clear the knuckle busting uh, pulley on the jack shaft there so I can crank that, um, that flywheel over to start this engine. And speaking of cranking this engine, following the instructions in uh, the manual, I got the magneto that my pal Larry loaned me, finally got it positioned to where this thing fires when the DC mark um, meets the timing mark behind this wire loom uh, that's uh, in the uh, side cover. Pow! So, yeah, I was all proud of myself for accomplishing that. And then I came to a realization. That setting is for a gasoline-powered engine well i'm running propane <laughs> i have to time this thing such so it will fire right about in that position because propane burns slower so you got to advance the timing a notch or two so it has more time to ignite and burn fully when you uh when it fires you know before you um you hit you know the power stroke at or at the power stroke and then it goes through the the other cycles so guess what i had to pull that thing out again rotate it enough so i can get her to fire right about there i double checked the other little LB engines, and sure enough, that's about when they fire. So, yeah, more fun. And while we're talking about having to redo things, you know, the, since I got this all plumbed up and running, I was having a dickens of a time of this thing overloading and throwing the belt. Couldn't figure out why. And then uh, Jim was over last night. I had a hand crank he needed for his Stover engine. And he brought over the belt lacing stuff. And then we had a nice visit in the cool of the evening here in the shop with our pal Arnie. Well, anyway, he was looking at that. 
and he spotted the problem right away. And he goes, well, Matt, it would be helpful if you had the sensing line. So this <laughs> unloading valve knows when to unload. <laughs> the port is plugged. It's blocked off. So I need to drill a hole in here, run a quarter-inch copper line, and get a couple fittings and, yeah, connect there. And that should probably work better. I also need to add a check valve. I'll, I'm not going to have it that ready in time for the show, but I'm going to put a check valve in line here um, so it won't backfeed. And then I'll have the sensing line here close to the compressor head. Then the ensemble will be complete. Ah, uh, another embarrassing doofus mistake, but hey, you know, stuff happens. Perfect. Just slightly advanced. Nice. Okay. Victory on that. Finally. So I pulled the uh, three to five back off, uh, scrounged up some scrap, fabric cobbled this, um, this little motor mount here, and I reinstalled these uh, two angle brackets, and this acts as a saddle and sandwiches the bottom frame of the engine in between these angle brackets. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hoist the engine back up on here set it in place, get it fairly well aligned. This old leaf spring will uh, go like that and come down and clamp on top of these saddles. I'll cut them off flush. And then I'll um, grab a nut and flat washer and lock washer and uh, cinch it down once I get the alignment back and forth in the right spot. So I'll get it up here and just temporarily clamp it because I'm gonna hoist the little uh, uh, little gray engine up here, get its belt pulley back on and get it all aligned with that belt. And then I'll see what kind of clearance I have between the valve covers of the two engines. That'll tell me where the larger engine needs to shift um, backwards or forwards. So yeah, that's next. As Jeff Bradshaw from Elderly Iron would say, I like that. I don't know what's a worse disaster. The workbench or that thing. Well, it's crunch time and I'm just about out of time. Am I going to succeed in getting this finished in time and get it to Eldorado days?